I'd been leveling a new build in Path of Exile, and whenever I play a build, people always ask me, how did you level? Now, I've said before, I'm terrible at leveling, and no one should level in PoE the way that I do. But people keep asking. So, with that disclaimer out of the way, here's how I leveled my Penance brand Duelist. Yeah, Duelist, because I haven't actually ascended as part of a leveling process. Now, if you're not too interested in leveling builds or just want to know how this turns out, well, do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, because after I finish with the leveling process, it's time to get into endgame, do a bunch of experimentation, and find out how the build works. But for now, let's get into how I hit level 65. So from level 1 to 12, I just used random junk off the floor plus the melee skills he started with. As of level 12, I swapped over to Stormbrand of Indecision because I needed to get to level 28 to use Penance Brand. Stormbrand of Indecision was minorly painful because all I had was a Doedri's Tenure and two Life Sprigs. But once I got to 28, things weren't so bad. I swapped over to Penance Brand, forgot to take off the Doedri's, and if you're wondering what other gear was I wearing, um, seven league steps and most of my other slots were empty. I think I had a tabulon in the chest piece. And I continued using Penance Brand until level 36, which is when I swapped to my full leveling setup. So let's take a look at that right now. So first up for most of my damage, I was using a replica Bitter Dream. This has way too many support gems, and if you have anything to do with charges, it's gonna be pretty darn good. In it, I put my Penance Brand. For a while, I did use faster casting, and whatever random support until I got both Swift Brand and Spell Echo, which I used for the rest of the leveling process. I had one Lahoop of All, since I wanted to fix my attributes and resistances and just not think about them. Then one Replica Tselio's Sign, since it adds a lot of damage. You can also just go with double Replica Tselio's Sign, it'll be a lot more damage, but less resistances. I used an Astramentus for the same reason. At low levels, I didn't want to have to think about attributes, and it fixed everything nicely. Then I had a Will Clash, since it has a relatively low level requirement, and a Rallakash's because I was planning to play a power charge stacking build in the endgame, so I might as well play a power charge stacking build while I level. For gloves, LEV Kassanaths, because they were horrifyingly cheap. I don't know why they're this cheap, but they were like 20, 30 C, and so yeah, I used them. And then a replica Prism Weave, which I absolutely should not have bought. Not only because it didn't actually do that much for me, but also because it just wasn't that good. And last up, my chest piece of Ghost Rithe, because I wanted something that had more stats than a tabula, especially Chaos Res. For a while, people weren't answering, so I just paid one divine and bought this one. Uh, if you're going to level this way, buying a Ghost Rithe for one divine is very important. The rolls don't matter. Paying one divine is what's important. Now, I did try Penance Brand of Conduction, and unfortunately, I found it to be incredibly ZDPS, so I wouldn't advise it. But... Penance Brand regular version is quite good. I didn't want to pay three divines just to try out Penance Brand of Dissipation before level 70. In terms of things that I have, well, there's my main skill. I'm using Flame Dash with faster casting. Cast on damage taken, Immortal Call. Then I had an Arrogance Petrified Blood setup because I wanted to try low life. I didn't end up actually using this, so these are just kind of empty sockets. Brand Recall, which I also didn't actually end up using, so I guess nothing of a Will Clash really mattered. Then Herald of Ash, Herald of Purity, and Discipline. Why Discipline, though? Is it just because I'm using Yes? No, it's because here are my other leveling items. I put on a Militant Faith. Since I'm getting the effects of Power Charges and Frenzy Charges anyway from the Rallakesh, I might as well get even more damage by getting 3% more spell damage per Power Charge. Over here... I'm using a Sublime Vision for plus one max power charge while you're affected by discipline. I wanted to test this in the end game, and since I was buying it anyway, I decided to just wear it while leveling. Then I've got my Flesh and Flame for Masterful Form. Again, I wanted to test this in the end game, so I decided to put it on while leveling. And last up, the other jewel that I was using is the Vat which was taken, which, yes, you guessed it, I'm going to use in the endgame. Maybe. I got this really early in the league for a few divines, and I had it lying around. The Fizz's extra is really, really nice. The Consecrated Ground is nice. The other two mods aren't too impactful, so I might use it, or I might sell it and try something else. Either way, around level 48, it's probably worth putting on. For my passives, I came out here and up this way. Now, early on, I did grab Ash, Frost, and Storm just to have another source of increased damage. 
but as I progressed and got up to the bread nodes, I decided it wasn't as important. I went left first so that I could get RMR and use my three auras. I also got Runebinder and Runesmith as early as possible. In fact, my original pathing was to come straight here, grab these, then go all the way around here and drop the node in the middle. Next, I came to the right and got Disciple of the Forbidden, filled out all of this. Before that, I had my Militant Faith here and took Mind Over Matter. Then, last up, I grabbed the brand crit stuff and came down here for the power charge. At this point, I was officially power charge stacking, and it was becoming power, frenzy, and endurance charges, so I figured might as well grab them. Because around level 60, I swapped to a badge of a brotherhood, I swapped to a Malachi's, and I swapped to this helmet. I have no idea if I'm actually going to use this helmet in the endgame, or if I'll go with a corrupted wheel clash or something else entirely. But for now, it seemed worth putting on, since I bought it again for testing later. And so, that's the basics of my setup which I used to level from 1, kind of, sort of, all the way through the campaign, where I finished at about level 65 by beating Katava. Now, I'll admit, in the early levels, before I got Penance Brand, it was fairly painful. Mostly just because the Storm Brand didn't quite work how I thought it would. Storm Brand of Indecision is really good if you have tanky single targets. But when it's jumping between enemies, it's not always the best at picking the right enemy to kill. So I found it to be quite awkward. Once I swapped to Penance Brand, this was, uh, unfortunately, much worse because I was trying Penance Brand of Conduction, and I've never been more impressed with the skill's inability to deal damage in an effective manner. You can't use Swift Brand because it has no duration, and somehow it doesn't manage to energize and electrify the packs the way the old Penance Brand did. I really was hoping that Penance Brand of Conduction would be good, and if you want to just kill white monsters, I guess it is. But aside of that, it's pretty darn bad. So I swapped off of it very quickly for regular vanilla Penance Brand which I have to say performed way better than I was expecting. Now, I knew that Penance Brand had a pretty big radius, but I was not expecting just how massive a radius was. We're talking about nearly screen-wide explosions with minimal AoE scaling. There's a little bit of a delay, and you do have to be careful about that. That can get you killed. But provided you have enough defenses or run around like a headless chicken, it's honestly not bad at all. And one advantage of using the Rallakeshes and then stacking power charges and getting Frenzy and Endurance per power is that you get a bunch of elemental resistances for free. The Ghost Rive gives a bunch of Chaos Res for free. So I was pretty much res capped throughout my leveling journey. And as for Fizz damage, uh, just don't get hit forehead. Any awkwardness in the build quickly went away around level 60, because this is when I swapped to the quote unquote real gear with Badge of a Brotherhood. Now there's a few more items that I need to swap to. Uh, Void Battery, for example, unfortunately requires level 68. So I won't be able to put it on for another couple levels. And I also need to go through all the Wildwood stuff to get my charms on. They're very, very powerful and an integral part of a build, doing things like capping my Chaos Res once I swap off of a Ghost Drive. And I didn't have those yet. So I was lacking in that department as well. But all things considered, it was a relatively smooth and relatively painless leveling experience. I know, I could have gone with a meta leveling build, like Hollow Palm or Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. The problem is I get bored very easily while leveling. And so I'd rather experiment a bit and learn about my skills mechanics, even if it means that I reach the end game more slowly. And as for how much does this leveling setup cost, I'm just going to go with about a yes. I have no idea how much the Flesh and Flames are, but they're definitely mandatory, I decided right now. And you absolutely cannot do without the random corruptions as well. Do you really need a Azanath's touch with elemental weakness? Yes. Yes, you do. And people who can't understand sarcasm will probably struggle to understand this last part. In short, I'm not saying this is the best way to level. In fact, this could be the worst way to level ever invented in Path of Exile. But it is a method that got my character safely to level 65. I mean, mostly. He only died like 10 times. And let's be honest, who needs those 10 lives anyway? And so now I have a question for anyone who made it this far in the video. Were you curious how I leveled my last build? And having seen this, are you ever going to ask me for leveling advice again? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And remember, I have warned you, do not use this build. It probably won't be good and you probably won't have a good time. But hey, if you really aren't convinced, go for it, I guess. It's not like I can actually stop you. Again, if you're curious how this turns out, do be sure to get subscribed. And for now, if you're looking for something else to watch, maybe check out how my past build turned out or take a look at a week four meta report to see what other people are doing which you can also read about over at Maxwell GG. But with that said, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as little as $1 a month, you can help make terrible leveling videos like this one possible. Link to support is down below. And so that's how I leveled my train wreck of a Penance Brand Duelist. 
Hopefully you at least found some of the things I was doing interesting. And hey, if not, there's always next time where I dive into some of the mechanics in more detail or talk about the endgame version of a build. So I'll see you for that sometime soon.